certainly know that this issue is getting worse. 39 million deaths between 2025 and 2050. And certainly a, a number that we should take seriously. Patients are often resistant to a number of antibiotics that we previously would have used. So really that's quite frightening. It's a significant global public health threat, putting modern medicine at risk. Antimicrobial resistance, when the germs that cause infections no longer respond to the medicines used to treat them. Largely caused by the overuse and misuse of antibiotics and antivirals in humans and farming, antimicrobial resistance is responsible for millions of deaths. A study published in the medical journal The Lancet this month found 1.06 million people died from drug-resistant infections in 1990, a figure that rose to 1.2 million in 2019 before dropping slightly in 2021. The paper predicts antibiotic-resistant infections will kill more than 39 million people between next year and 2050. It could be an underestimate or an overestimate, but it's a certainly a large number. Uh, and um, if we don't do things differently now, that is where we're heading. We certainly know that this issue is getting worse. The issue is so serious it's being discussed in New York today when the UN General Assembly holds a high-level meeting on antimicrobial resistance. This really is quite big news globally and we certainly need to be aware of that in Australia and start to think about what we can do in Australia to uh, slow down uh, or mitigate uh, what's inevitable, which is an increasing antimicrobial resistance pattern. Professor Jennifer Martin is a physician and clinical pharmacologist. In her 30 years as a doctor, she's seen an increasing number of hospital patients presenting with antibiotic resistant bugs. It's become a lot more challenging for us, a lot more costly in terms of day to day in the hospital. And often we're finding actually that we have to use several different antibiotics and courses of therapy to actually ensure that people get the treatment that they need. Professor Martin and her colleagues are now seeing increasing resistance in elderly patients to the antibiotics used to treat urinary tract infections and even resistance to top shelf antibiotics. It has serious consequences for people with things like diabetic ulcers. We're often trying a lot of different antibiotics and then using surgical options like debridement of the wound or even amputation to get on top of uh, really nasty infections. Really we're seeing quite a significant impact in, in terms of um, the duration of a patient's um, illness, the time they need in hospital, but also just the complexity then of treatment. Two years ago, Harvard University mathematician Johann Paulsen experienced an unknown infection, likely a tick-borne illness from his dog, which quickly progressed to sepsis. So they tried antibiotics, it didn't have any effect whatsoever. And then they tried a second antibiotic, didn't have any effect. Uh, tried a third antibiotic, didn't have any effect. And then I guess eventually they, they found one that worked. Um, but it was kind of guesswork. And the, the hospital ran days of tests on his blood to figure out what the bacteria was. They, they, they couldn't just ask, is there a pathogen in here? They had to ask individual question, is there salmonella in here? Is there E. coli in here? Is there Klebsiella in here? So they had to ask all these individual questions instead of just saying, what is there? Johan Paulsen was already developing tools for studying bacteria under the microscope at Harvard. Shocked by his own experience, he's now leading a team in a $150 million project tackling antibiotic resistance. Scientists are developing bacteria extraction techniques, microscope technology and using AI to speed up diagnosis of bacterial infections. So we're hoping that instead of taking uh, five days, it should take uh, ideally five minutes or at least less than an hour. You take the sample from the patient and then one hour afterwards, you should have a, a complete diagnosis where you know how many bacteria you have, what they are and what antibiotic they respond to. The plan is for the same machine to then be used to speed up the discovery of more effective antibiotics. We've now fallen behind the curve in a way of developing new antibiotics to deal with this problem. Uh, and that's really the challenge. So gonorrhea, for example, uh, in many parts of the world and occasionally here in Australia is becoming uh, virtually incurable. Globally, one of the reasons progress has been slow is profitability. Pharmaceutical companies make more money from drugs designed for long-term use rather than short-course antibiotics. 
But the UK has introduced a new model where the NHS will pay pharmaceutical companies a fixed annual subscription fee for access to new antibiotics. That's an innovative thing. We'll look, we'll look closely at that. That would be a, a big change in, in Australia if we were to go down that path. Australia's Chief Medical Officer, Paul Kelly, is attending today's UN meeting alongside global leaders. Infectious diseases know no borders, as we know from our experience during COVID. Some countries you're able to get antibiotics without a prescription uh, across the counter, overuse and use of poor quality antibiotics can drive resistance to antibiotics um, and people travel. Uh, they carry their bugs with them and uh, those superbugs can actually get into the food chain as well and so that is why it's a global problem and why we need to have global solutions. There are hopes the meeting will accelerate action on issues like antibiotic use in intensive farming, diagnostic testing and vaccine development for common infections. It's a chance to have a real rallying call for all heads of government, of all governments around the world, um, to take this issue seriously and to look for innovative ways of dealing with the problem. The consequences of doing nothing are dire. Without antibiotics that work, medical procedures that we take for granted are at risk. Things like caesarean sections, knee and hip replacements and cancer treatments. We may be in a world not too far from now where those things uh, will no longer be safe procedures. And I really don't want to be part of the generation that allowed that to happen. And so I'm a great believer in thinking innovatively to deal with this issue now before it gets worse.